Hi, I'm Sabine Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Estimating by Time Domain Simulation the Loop Gain Transfer Function. This presentation was done in collaboration with Evgeny Smidochki. Now please note that this is an educational presentation. The explained method is not claimed to be better, faster, or more accurate than any other method, although I think it has a lot of merit. Now don't miss the highlight of the presentation at the end. Now the conventional way to get the loop gain, the transfer function of the loop gain, is to insert an excitation in the path of the feedback and then to get the ratio between, say, in this case, B and A, the ratio of B and A is actually the transfer function of the loop gain in closed loop. Now, you can do it by simulation. LT spice can use step and measure and get the algorithm going on and get the transfer function. Q spice, there is actually a, di a directive a body. PSIM has a built-in pr procedure for that. And of course, you can do it by hardware. For example, Omicron's body 100 will let you inject into a real system, a physical system, this uh, signal, and get this ratio by the network analyzer or frequency response analyzer. What we are after in this examination is, first of all, the frequency at which the loop gain goes down to 0 dB, and then the phase at this point, which is determining the closed loop response in the time domain. That is, if the phase margin is very small, then you have an oscillatory system, not to mention that if it is too small, then it will be unstable. So this is what we are after in this type of testing. Now suppose you have two converters, like DC to DC converter, I'm showing here an analog device two converter. This is one and this is another one. And you'd like to know very quickly what is the bandwidth in closed loop and what is the phase margin. Now we can do, of course, the test, as I've said, but I'm showing here a different approach, which, as I've said, is for educational purposes, but it can be used for a quick look at the bandwidth and the phase margin. So here is the idea. Injecting here now is a sweep of frequency, it's called chip, although it's not the official chip, you'll see it in a minute, and the spectrum of such a signal is really spread all over the range of interest. This is depending, of course, on the frequency range here, and here we see it's uh, between, say, 2 kilohertz and about 20 kilohertz. It turns out that this is what I'm interested in one of the cases, and then using this signal as an excitation and looking at this ratio. So here it is for one of the DC to DC converters. Here is the injection. And as you can see, I'm generating this signal by a sign of time square. It turns out, and a constant, it turns out that this function is really producing this type of a waveform, which is kind of very nice and very simple. So I'm generating this signal, and then, first of all, I have to get rid of the DC, of course, because there is DC here. So this is a high-pass filter, and I've added here a low-pass filter in here, just to get rid of the ripple, although the ripple is not uh, that high. Now these filters are, of course, adding to the phase shift. I'm not very careful here, so this is just for demonstration. Don't take the numbers as accurate or exact number. This is just for the demonstration of the method. So I'm interested in this ratio between this and this after the filtering. And here is what I'm getting while running this simulation. Putting one top of the other, the out and the in. You see the out is about constant while the in is changing. It's very small at the beginning and it goes up and up. Now looking here, zooming in here, this is at low frequency. You see that the Ingoing signal is low, the outcoming signal is high, so th this is actually, this ratio is the loop gain. So there is a high loop gain here, which goes down as the frequency increases. Here we see it already like in, in this area here, the ratio is approaching one, and lo and behold, at this, this point here, it is about one. Okay, that's not very accurate, but pretty close to one. And so at this point, I can look first of all at the frequency, and it turns out that the frequency is 134 kilohertz. 
and also look at the phase shift between these two which is actually in this case this is actually the phase margin and you see that the phase margin in this case is 49 degree pretty good it's about 50 degree and this is a very nice solid design and the bandwidth is really very impressive now let's have a look now at the second DC to DC converter this is a voltage mode control you see this is the phase compensation network this and this and this part kind of complex like a type 3 compensator and again i've put here the two filters the high pass and the low pass and running it here it is the frequency range as you can see is smaller and we are not getting to that high frequencies and again you see very high gain at the beginning very high gain okay and then as we go up at the frequency we come to the point of gain of about one well it maybe the sweep is too fast so i get some transient here it should have been slower sweep anyhow i have here an area in which the gain is about one this is looking at, at this point here and from this i can find out that the bandwidth is 16 kilohertz much lower than the other dc to dc converter and the phase margin is only 14 degrees so this is not a very good design it's sort of approaching oscillation or instability and indeed if i am now exposing these two dc to dc converters to a step load here the step load here it's one amp because this is a high power converter it has outside transistor this one is a lower power and therefore the step is only 200 milliamp here it's one amp and what we see here indeed is that for the phase margin of, of 50 degree 49 degrees we have a kind of a smooth response although the recovery is slow i really don't know exactly why it is it has to do with the capacitor probably or the size of the inductor nonetheless this is what we see on the other hand in the case of uh, this LTC3703 with this design then the phase margin as we've seen was estimated to be 14 degrees and indeed you see here the virtue of oscill I mean you see oscillation it's not too bad it tolerable but you see that the phase margin is indeed small but this is not the end of it cherry on the cake in this case is really the fact that you can use the data obtained by say LT spice or any other spice simulator in fact and run in MATLAB the ARX function which is identifying the transfer function identifying the system and by this you can obtain both the Z and S domain transfer function of the loop gate which is kind of very very nice so to do this you have to do the following first of all you have to run this proposed LT spice simulation and then obtain equal time spaced record of the in and out now I'm explaining how to do this in this uh, video this is the link and I'm going to put the link in the description section of the video that you are now watching so you get the two records of the input and out and then on based on prior knowledge of the type of the system you kind of guess or estimate the number of poles n0 of the transfer function and then you run this ARX function this estimation function and lo and behold you get the result very very nice so this is one of the units, one of the DC to DC converter, the one with the high, higher bandwidth. Here is the S domain transfer function. This is the Z domain. And of course, you can now draw the frequency response in the frequency domain. And what we see here is the bandwidth of the zero cross frequency is uh, 100, well, it is like 25. Of course, you can get the correct number, the exact number. Uh, from the plot or from the record and we find also that the phase margin in this case is found to be 57 it was estimated earlier by me to be 49 now this can be of course expected because this is not a very accurate uh, method but for the approximate estimate that we are after this is very good and now I'm going to the other 
DC to DC converter, the one with the lower bandwidth. Here it shows that it's, yeah, well it's about uh, 16, something like that kilohertz. Of course, you can get the exact number. Here, the phase margin is found to be 18 degree. We found 14. This is again, this is in the now MATLAB uh, graphics. And this is the S domain. And this is the Z domain uh, transfer function. Very, very neat. And I think very simple. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.